Welcome back yeah. to another day in the bay, oh, Mr. Very Dale. Jovial. Very jovial. Well, you know, it's a Friday. So... Do I have to be jovial? Nope, you can be your plain old boring self. I mean, um... Whoa! Whoa, that was really... <laughs> What have we got in today, Dale? So, we have a VR6 Mark III Golf. Um, nice. And it was Adam who won our Day in the Bay competition on Instagram. Did a bit of Instagram stalking on his page and I kind of scrolled through and saw this and asked if he could bring this and he was well up for bringing it as it's a project for you now. Yeah, is it, that, yeah. You've inherited it as a yeah. project. So what's the plan with it? What are we going to focus on today? So to focus on is the pink paint. So we're going to revive that and bring it back to glossy red. Um, hopefully teach these guys a few things. Nice. And um, give it some nice protection as well because obviously this time of year the cars get absolutely hammered. Um, so yeah, the main focus in is really reviving that tired red. Sweet. We'll come back in a minute and talk about products. Ooh. So, we're going to be talking about waterless washing first. So that's why I like to have one black towel, one yellow towel. All right. So we're going to be using the Ultimate Waterless Washing Wax. Okay. Now, if you get to a show and event or like a midweek clean and you don't have access to water, grit guard, wash mm -hmm. that we're comfortable using, this is the safest way of cleaning the car. Okay. okay. Now, a lot of people in the past clean their cars at shows with detailers. That's yeah. What I do. yeah, detailer. that's what, yeah but a detailer is actually a finishing product. Okay. So it actually it can remove light fingerprints and dust. Yeah. But it's actually for gloss enhancement and protection. Now, I know it's very hypocritical for me to say that and present you with something that looks like a detail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's actually it's a sprayable shampoo. So what it does okay. is it encapsulates the dirt and grime on the surface and safely lubricates it away. Oh, okay. And then you can go around with a detailer to finish it up. Yeah. Oh, right. So like I say, sometimes, you know, cleaning the car at a show with a detailer kind of looks good at the show, but you could be causing more a bit more damage yeah. than, than you want to. So the reason I've got two different colour cloths out, because once you've kind of really sprayed it on there, Get it nice and lubricated. Like I say, you can use this on the wheels, glass, anything like that. Okay. Get your first towel and kind of wipe in nice, clean, straight lines. And the reason I picked the towel up like that is so I've constantly got a nice, clean bit of towel rubbing on the paintwork. Okay. And then with the second towel, buff in the opposite way. Okay. This way you'll never get white lines, oh, ever. Okay. Yeah, so it's the same with detailers, glass, <laughs> wax, yeah. So you never get white lines yeah, on the car. No, that's mad. We always tell people if you can get it looking 80, 70, 80% in here, outside look absolutely Normal, yeah. flawless. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of people kind of beat themselves up when they're in here. But this is a very exaggerated environment. Yeah. Cool, so now we've got the products. If you want to, like I say, because it's Friday, I want to do as little as possible. <laughs> so if you guys want to get involved, like pick a half of the car each and get cool. yeah. cleaning. Which side you want? Yeah, I don't mind. Red is the most common colour for fading. Um, I wish I knew the scientific reason why it does it. I guess it's just like oxidi oxidisation like Yeah, and it kind of bleaches it. The UV rays seem to damage it a lot easier. Yeah. And you just see that pinkiness coming through. So that's going to be our main focus today, um, using the Ultima Compound, which we shout and rave about all the time. Yeah. But it really is a hero product. It really does work incredibly well. We're going to be getting the machine polisher out, get these guys using that. And on certain aspects, we'll probably be using yeah, it by I'd... hand as well. But mainly, we're going to get the machine polisher out and yeah. really revive it up. Just going to do a quick test panel, correct? Exactly that. We're pretty confident about what this is going to do for the paintwork, so we're going to try it on a pretty obvious place. So we're going to do the mirror. So, even coat pad, because these are very plastic and we want to be very gentle. It is old paint, so it's not always the case that you get the machine out. You know, for little subtle areas like this, always try hand application first, just in case that's all it needs. Like a DA polisher as well, you prime, prime the, the pad. pad. Always like to prime the pad, it just, just means I've got a longer buffing cycle. Now I know I'm applying it by hand, but because it is, it's faded paint, we want to spend a bit more time working on it. The reason 
this is so good for faded colours is because it contains paint cleaners which brighten the colour. So okay. those chemical cleaners kind of remove that oxidation and bring it back to its natural colour. Common with older paints, uh, especially red, um, they can be single stage, which means that when you are working it using a compound or a polish, you may get colour transfer. Um, if it is single stage, you will get colour transfer. It's not a problem, it's just you are removing that, that damaged layer of paint. And you kind of need that to get that fresh, vibrant colour underneath, fully exposed. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just fine. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry yourself. Whenever I'm using it, I just draw a line down the middle, okay. like that, and then I kind of just prime the pad like that. Okay. This way you can use it for longer, it doesn't dry up. Yeah. So if you want to finish, okay. do you want to have a go on the other one? Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Stamp out the area you want to work. Yep. So, two hands on the machine. You'll notice it's quite a heavy machine. Yeah. So you, there's no need for you to bear down. Just okay. use the weight of the machine itself. This hand is your balance. That's yep. making sure that pad is always flat. Now, okay. if you get it flat, it means you'll get an even polish, right. but also you won't get zigzag lines. You ever seen a car after a machine polish it's got kind of snail trails all over it, sometimes yeah. in the sun? It's because someone didn't have it flat. Right, so okay. keep it flat with that hand. Yep. This hand is your guide, it's telling the machine where to go. Okay. Now I hold it there because I like to be close to the paint, but for first time users, holding okay. the handle is fine. The main thing is to relax, Okay. because the, the tighter you hold onto it, you're going to feel that vibration all the way through yeah. to your shoulder, then after a whole car it just becomes draining. <laughs> so the more you relax, the easier it is. Cool. So, I'm going to set the speed to the slowest. Okay. I'm going to pull the trigger and just quickly spread the area. So you know how we prime the pad? Yeah. Prime the surface. Oh, okay. Nice and quick. And always start and stop it on the panel. That way, that doesn't get product all over his yeah. face. Okay. So, you see on here we've got swirl and defect removal, 4.8 yeah. to 5.8. I always go slap bang in the middle of those two. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to do, I, I call it hashtag polishing. Yeah. So we're going to go up and down. Then left and right. Okay. And stop. Do you need to start at a specific yeah, point? Yeah, start or? at a corner. Yeah. And go about an inch per second. Okay. So the slower you go, the quicker it gets done. Right, okay. Yeah. How was that? That was a word. Went yeah, nice and easy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So. What we do, get the towel, take the head of the product off one yep. way, flip the towel, other way, other way. Oosh, not bad. Happy with that? Pretty happy, Especially yeah. when you look at it here, it's crazy. I'll take it. Yeah, that's so different. Yeah. You can actually see the lights more clearly. It's nuts, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So we can see, Dale, that this has got quite a lot of colour transfer. Definitely, yeah. Um, like we mentioned earlier, working on single stage older paints, you're going to get that. Um, so it's, if you are machine polishing, it's very important to clean your pad because this is going to be now full of paint residues. You can see on my hand. And you don't want that clogging up the pad because it's just going to take forever to revive the paint and you, you kind of, you're not doing anything good, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? So you want to maintain the pad after each section. And the easiest way of doing that 
if you've got an airline, then you can use an airline, but most people have hoovers to hand. So I just want to drag out those kind of dried paint residues. It's always going to stain the pad, that's not a problem. But you just want to free up those pores and allow it to breathe again so you can work the paint. This is part Canuba, part synthetic. Okay. So the reason I'm using the Canuba on your colour is because it's naturally yellow and toffee coloured. Yeah. Which means it gives a solid gloss like this a real brightness. Okay. Now we have like synthetic, fully synthetic waxes like the Ultimate and the NXT, but you use them on darks and metallics. Right. Because okay. the the synthetic haze goes to a clear, which means it makes a metallic pop. Okay. Now for solid colours like this, always use a Canuba based wax. Now, for the whole bonnet. All you want to do is put the pad on the wax, half a turn, that's it. Hold on. Yeah. And then we're just going to put it's three like lines. Half a tub. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way too much three pad. lines across it like that. And then just go across the lines like that. Okay. Just one pass, that's it. Does it matter if you do circles or straight lines? It really or? doesn't matter. No? Okay. And the reason we're using this straight after the compound is because this is rich with um, polishing oils. Okay. So it means it's going to refine it and protect it in one stage. Now, with a solid colour like this, you don't necessarily have to use a polish. Yeah. Because you use a polish to refine a darker colour after compounding. Okay. But with a colour like this, if you've got it to a pretty good finish, which you guys have, go straight in with a wax. Okay. 